Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by my co-host, Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our track. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I, was, I was still getting oh, situated. I um, thought I had to the eight <clears throat> No. I mean, yeah, probably, but I wasn't. I just wasn't ready. It's been a while, you know, because I wasn't here last week. It was one episode. We, of had, we had an imposter no, among us. We had a future solace rushing. A future solace rushing? Because mm-hmm. mm. I was going to... At first, compare her to someone, and I was like, "No, she stands she's on gonna her be own. A, yeah, she's gonna be her. She's her gonna own. be her future self. Yeah, so, <laughs> and she did amazing. A nice short episode. She'd been asking for her follow up or annual episode, I guess as it is. Um, so after the first day of school, she got her episode. She came on. She talked. And I need to go back and watch last week, last year's episode again just to see how much one person can change in a year because it's mind blowing. Just the conversation, the maturity level of the conversation, you know, last year she was really silly and I mean, mean, very still good, very sharp, very cute. But this year just conversing with her, she was, she was just very mature and I wasn't I wasn't ready for that and seeing it on camera. So yeah, it's gonna be cute as she progresses. And I'm already trying to scheme if Savi's old enough to carry enough of a conversation to no. be on the show. Um, no, absolutely not. But yeah, so that was fun. We I had solace on, got to have a little conversation with my girl. Yeah, and she sounded like really mature. If you didn't watch and you just listen to her voice she sounded older than six a lot older than until she started talking like fully but i thought it was hilarious when she said her sisters were annoying just the honesty the brutal honesty and she's right they they are annoying but i just appreciated that she didn't hold back she also said they were sweet. She said she said Sonoma was sweet. She didn't really use sweet when it came to Sovereign. But yeah, so that was last week's brief episode. Um, How was it? It was good. Just talking to her. Was <laughs> it, did it seem like a forced conversation or did it just seem like you I and mean, her it, were just talking? It, it's not our, our typical conversation, like when it's just the two of us in the car or whatever. Um, but it was it was close. It was more for entertainment, so there was a little more probing, whereas, you know, if we're talking in the car, you ask her how school went, and I don't remember, or, you know, there's more, I think she, I think it was more her, she was, she recognized, like, the performance she needed to put on, and I think she did that. How was it, speaking to someone, not me, while you were recording? It was fine. Yeah. Didn't feel different? I mean, she's six, so I felt a little different because a lot. I had to lead the conversation in terms of talking. Mm, it's just the first time you've done rush vibes without me, mm-hmm. so yeah, it was fine. Yeah, should we tell people that you were actually slightly buzzed? <laughs> <sighs> so what had happened was what had happened was that day I had tickets to a female bartenders competition so i had attended that it was monday night i attended that first and i left right before my demise so i left i got home and then i was like i'm ready to go to bed but solace was still awake and the room was ready so i knew i had to record so I just pushed through and did. I, I knew it was not going to be a long episode. Uh, I don't know if I had not been buzzed, if it would have been a long episode or if we would have talked, spoken more. But I was tired. I was exhausted. I was ready to go to sleep. I was already sleep deprived. So, yes, there. Are, I'm sure if you go back and, and watch, you'll see that I did have a slight buzz. 
Um, but we made it happen. I made it happen. Just made it happen for the people. I did, and for the child. For so. the vibe tribe and the child. Not proud of it, but it was done. I mean, it is what it is, right? It is. I didn't expect to because, I mean, the sample cups were like that small. Like I wasn't, and they weren't shots, but it was just, there were eight different bartenders competing, so. You gotta get your weight up. Or just <laughs> stay home. Or not, not. You gotta get your liquor. You gotta, you gotta get your liquor up. Um, but those, those bar, those ladies, there are some very talented female bartenders in the city of Charlotte. They're doing amazing things, and I hope to be in a position someday soon to be able to do amazing things alongside them. Like what? I don't know. What kind of amazing things do you foresee yourself doing? I don't know, but. That's not the kind of episode I want to have right now. No, I'm just saying. I mean, you just, I'm just curious. I mean, we all know I, I'm in the industry. I'm in the beverage industry. The industry. The industry I <laughs> enjoy and desire to grow in. So I would like to be in a position working for a large international supplier, cultivating bartenders, hospitality professionals. Cool. Was that hard? Was no, that difficult? I didn't want to talk about myself. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Sorry. I was just curious. Okay. Thought you might want to elaborate. I did what I need to do. <clears throat> you know, you called me out over um <clears throat> while we were watching Solace's episode because I told you because you were buzzed, you were breathing so heavy into the mic. And you told me <laughs> with such force that I always smack my um <laughs> smack my lips so um i've never been so conscious of not doing it of not doing something and i hear as it during I, the as live I recording not even just on audio no i know well i'm surprised that you finally I i'm surprised you didn't say something earlier i snapped now i understand the whole show snapped like people just hold stuff in i just chose not to say anything it's not healthy I finally was just like you should have i mean because i would have told you like early on, as soon as I noticed it, but for some reason you held on to it. It doesn't make sense. But thank you. You're welcome. It's tough because now I realize how often, like, I just do it. Mm-hmm. Not just on camera, I do it in conversation, mm-hmm. conference calls, mm-hmm. phone conversations. Yes. I do it all the time. It's part of who you are. Not anymore. I'm kicking it. I heard a slight. Light slap just now. I did. I did it already, like twice this episode. But I'm, I'm getting rid of it. Mm-hmm. As long as you're aware, it's all about awareness. Well, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm aware now. So sometimes you just need a rude awakening. Or an awakening it doesn't have to be rude. Okay. Goodness a gracious. polite awakening. Yeah, just don't hold stuff in, man. We're a team. I almost did it again. So we have some exciting stuff coming up. With uh, guests, we've got some guests scheduled. And we've got some side projects that we're working on Mm. individually, you and I. So excited to talk more about that uh, in the coming weeks, Mm -hmm. coming episodes. Um, Don't worry, Rush Vibes isn't going anywhere (laughs) for the for the 104 subscribers that we oh, yeah, we gained a subscriber. Uh, in the last couple of weeks so shout out to whoever you are shout out to you we appreciate you make sure you share and bring a friend next time but we've it feels like we haven't you and I haven't recorded for a while because we haven't but it feels longer than it's actually been hmm. so we recorded two weeks ago yeah like on like a like Monday because I think I was going out of town Right, you were ahead of time. And then, of course, we did Solace last week, so. It's been a lot of stuff that we've missed. Some big things. Mm-hmm. Anything particular that happened that you just kind of want to toss back and forth? So I can't remember. I thought you keep, what happened to the note? I, a lot of times things come to me while I'm driving, 
and I haven't accepted that my memory is not just say hey Siri. What it used to be. Siri does not respect me. She does not respond to me. If I'm not pushing the button, I can't get Siri to work. Do um, you have the voice? Probably not. Hey Siri. Yeah. I yeah, you probably don't, don't have it on. So it's set to the button. But uh, I'll hear something and, and I think, oh, this is something we need to discuss on the pod. This is s- s- too big. There, I, there's no way I'm going to forget it. And you forget it. I forget it. I had like a, a list of things. No, you didn't. In my head. <laughs> I had a mental list of things in my head. And now I'm just out. I think I, I feel like I wanted to touch on some Kanye stuff. It no sucks, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I want. I think I wanted to talk about the VMAs in some capacity, but I can't remember why. I mean, there was stuff I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Some stuff went down at Mar-a-Lago. We already talked about that. Did we talk about? Yeah, that? we talked about. That. Okay. Well, we it, it we recorded the night that the news broke, so I guess more details have come out mm-hmm, since. since then. But um, we touched on the subject matter of. Mar-a-Lago okay. being raided. All right, Venus and Serena, they played their doubles. Serena is allegedly done with the game, but she's not. Um, you don't think she's done? She'll be back. Playing tennis? Yeah. You think so? I think so. I feel like she kind of left it open-ended. What do you mean? I just feel like the way she said she was leaving wasn't concrete. I think there's I think she left it in such a way that she has the opportunity to return should she choose to. At least you gonna pull Tom Brady? Probably. <laughs> Just be like this mom stuff. It's a lot. Like a month later she'd be like, you know what? A second back. thought. Let's get back on the court. TMZ's, I got one more in me. TMZ's gonna, TMZ's gonna catch her practicing or something. And we're like, why? Uh there was so, there was so much that I thought I wanted to talk about. There's a lot of there's a lot of news in the world. There is, and it's overwhelming to keep track of all the news in the world. And while you're doing all the things that you have to do, now you see why I take micro breaks so I can see what's going on in the world. And there was there was a news special on this, and it, it happened came across the TV as I was as I was walking by, and I told you I was like, see, I'd be knowing the micro Dude. breaks. I yeah, when it comes to micro breaks, absolutely. Okay. You got to give me, come on, give my props on that. Because I said it and not like five days later, we saw it, a news special about micro breaks and helping people. What was it? What was it? No, it was, people are it was on Good Morning America. And people, you need micro breaks to help get through the day. It's healthy. Mm. It's like cat naps or power naps. Uh, Except you don't actually go to sleep. You just take a break from whatever work you're doing, whatever monotonous stuff you're doing for your employer got it you should try it okay I'll, if i have the time you do have the time you just got to take it <laughs> you should do anyway we're not going to get into that conversation what do you have because i i got nothing oh so you went through all that just to say you have nothing to yeah, talk about i don't remember what i wanted to talk about or things that sparked my interest that i wanted to elaborate on so the vmas mm-hmm. we watched some of it together and then you fell asleep on the floor i fell asleep on the floor and then you watched the rest of it maybe one of the kids woke up oh okay sonoma might have woken up i don't think i finished it i think I, or i might have just gone to bed um it was interesting they honored Nicki minaj they honored the red hot chili peppers and then it felt as if everybody else who performed who presented I had no clue who, like, nominees. I had no clue who these people were. And it was concerning to me. Not that I've ever been, like, really current. But it just got me thinking about all of these people that are celebrities, whether they're musicians or just influencers or just known. There are so many people who are famous for what seems like absolutely no reason. (laughs) What do you mean no reason? their contribution to society on that level seems minimal. Like you'll ask someone like, Oh, or they'll mention someone you're like, why? Like, what do they do? And like, they just are. And that's why they're famous because they just are. Um, there are all these new musicians that I just, I, I don't even know where songs keep coming from. 
There are people who, by the time I figure out who they are, they've already phased out and someone else who looks just like them has phased in. So it was just, it was, and I mean, the VMAs used to be something I really looked forward to and it just was kind of underwhelming. Uh, I feel like the actual significant big name artists don't participate. So it's, it's very, I actually don't even really know who, who's considered a big name artist anymore, but it just seems as if the people who participate in these award shows are kind of BC list as opposed to a list. Like, I feel like, you know, Beyonce's kind of put herself on a pedestal. She's, you know, it, if you have a ceremony, some kind of awards and she's there, then like, it's, that's the caliber of which it is. Or maybe it's just a generation gap and I just affiliate with people of that generation. You know, your Beyonce's, your Justin Timberlake's, your Janet Jackson's, those type of people. Uh, and they're not really involved in, it's like the sector of music they're involved in is not the sector of music that's popping per se. So I just kind of felt lost, like just watching the VMAs. It was just a lot. I think one thing that I'm constantly being made aware of is how big the world is. Mm. Like the world is huge. And even in an industry such as music, where you have your you have your legends and you have your living legends, your Jay Z's, your Beyonce's and so forth there's still like little corners of the industry where you have people who are in that niche just as big as a Jay-Z or a Kanye. Cause I'm on Twitter because I take micro breaks. I'm on Twitter a lot during the day and I'll see artists referenced and I'll hear so-and-so did this many streams on Twitch or whatever or streams on YouTube or sold out this concert or whatever. I'm just like, Oh, no idea who that is, but look at their crowd, look at the crowd size, mm -hmm. look at their follow, follow, look at their yes. social, social media following. And I think some of it has to do with just like a shift in generations, mm -hmm. right? Like with the internet, YouTube, TikTok, um, there's, it's so much easier to reach your audience without, just having to do tours without just having to do shows. Um, you know, it's just a lot easier for an artist to, to reach their, their audience and their, their biggest fans. So I could, I could understand watching a music award show and not knowing who majority of the artists are because the way that we became familiar with artists, was like the only way back in the day where now you just got so many different avenues, so many different platforms. Um, so, you know, if you don't spend a lot of time on YouTube, you may not know a couple of the pop some artists who are really popular on YouTube. If you don't even watch MTV, I can't even tell you the last time I watched MTV. Mm -hmm. It was probably it was the last time ago. the real world road rules challenge or whatever those things were called was on. Like it's been a minute. So, yeah, Minaj, I get that. It was definitely different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Nicki Minaj. I And I didn't even really rock with Nicki like that. Like, I know, calm down, I didn't realize her tribe, her troop, whatever they were called. The barbs. barbs. Um, I think that was part of a, a subject matter I wanted to talk about, just the flocks that follow these mega stars. Like, barbs. You know, you got the, the, the beehive. I don't know what Taylor Swift people call, are they called like Swifters? I, I wasn't aware Taylor Swift had a... I, I just assume she does, or she's just everybody's fan. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Taylor Swift I, is cool though. She's right. I like Taylor. Um, I have a traumatic experience with Taylor Swift, so I'm like back and forth with whether I'm a fan of hers or not. My freshman year, we lived in suites. So we mm -hmm. had a common area and four, four of us, we each had our own room and shared a bathroom. So Ashley and I shared a wall. Why are you dropping? Why are you name dropping? Cause she'll be fine. <laughs> uh, and anyone who knows that era knows why I have a tr trauma with Taylor Swift. So Ashley and I 
we were super cool. Uh, we shared a wall, but her alarm was the Taylor Swift. It was back when we had iPods. Oh, I know this. So I know this. I know this, I know this story. I, um, soundtrack. But she would go away like three weekends a month. And her alarm was just set every day to go off at eight. So I would have to listen to the entire soundtrack. And she locked her suite. Yes. So you couldn't get it and turn it off. Um, Sometimes it would be unlocked, but for the most part it was locked. So yeah, yeah, I just struggled with Taylor Swift, not because of her, anything she's done to me personally. Well, yeah, it was her voice who personally attacked me every Saturday morning. Isn't it interesting how we just, name everything trauma <laughs> i that's actually a topic i wanted to talk about too like about it's not the, the use the misuse i know, of I know you're being funny but it's not really a traumatic it's not i mean traumatic I'm not experience like screaming every time i know I, I know all the words to the song because of it <laughs> but it, it's definitely it, it it puts a sour taste in my mouth when it comes to taylor swift because i for a year almost a year however long two semesters are yeah. i just had to rock out to taylor swift constantly so there's that yeah i like i like taylor um but yeah so barbs Barb. they have who else has something uh i don't know it's just those two i guess i mean i'm sure there are others on a smaller but scale they go, they go hard like they had a lot they were a lot of them there some of them presented her with her either it's a lifetime achievement award. I don't remember what it was, but um, I was like, I didn't realize she had a flocking like that. And they were kind of, they're kind of overwhelming. And I'm kind of intermediate. Like I'm not, not a Nicki Minaj fan, but I'm also not a Nicki Minaj. I won't go out of my way to listen to her. I appreciate her contribution to music, but I'm not like, like some people go hard for Nicki. And I mean, I, I feel like, in my coming of age musically, Nikki was part of that in terms of, you know, Kanye, Nikki. Um, there was just a group of. Nikki was big. She huge. was. She was. And people were. I remember because I was in a modeling troupe. Like they were using a Nikki song for every one of our competitions. And like everyone was always like. Nah, 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 like the memorize. you all doing all like the Nicki Minaj mannerisms. And I was just kind of like, y'all, I don't get this Barbie thing at all still don't and i won't but i'm also just one of those people when i notice people are trending and everyone is flocking i just like it's almost innate for me to go against it so i just, i don't know i just don't like being like everyone else hmm. so you're a barb <laughs> secretly yes i got my i got my pink wig um heels and all that oh god yeah uh, the nails i got, I got it all mm -hmm. nah i, I rock i rock with Nikki. um so the lizzo thing the lizzo thing the lizzo thing did you hear you heard what Ari spears said right you told me oh yeah i told you what, is it, what are your thoughts on it I'd rather not. Oh, rather, I mean, not what? It's one of those things that, you know, whenever someone says something and you realize that it's almost factual, people are like, now I can't unsee it. I kind of can't unsee it now. Okay, uh, so one that's body shaming. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's, it's emoji. Body shaming. It's emoji shaming or whatever. Uh, because <laughs> I feel like he's not, he, he, his joke is not, does not fall too far off. I'll just put it like that. Wow. I thought you'd come to the defense of a fellow black woman. I mean, it was funny, though. It was it, the context of it was funny. And what's funny is you laughing and you didn't even hear him say it. Like, I just told you, I just told you what he said and you laughing. Wow. So for those of you who don't know, Ari Spears, a uh, comedian, uh, mainly known for his um, impressions back in the day. I think he was on Mad TV uh, was. I think he does a podcast. I'm not sure if that's where the, the clip came from, but um, someone asked him if he listened to Lizzo um, and he just kind of just took it as an opportunity to Lizzo make fun, make fun of her and basically said she looks like the, uh, the poop emoji. <laughs> basically saying that because of the way her body is shaped. 
Um, and Lizzo, like you talk about uh, artists having these these tribes. I think that there's what are the Lizzo? a Lizzo. I don't know what they're called, but I know that because this isn't the first time she's been. Oh, people as, come for her. All as the some time. would say, unfairly attacked. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, she has a lot of defenders on social media. She has a lot of fans who are vocal mm-hmm. in their defense of her. As they should be. They're her fans. So she won an award and she basically started to address her haters or whatever, but said I'm, essentially I'm winning. I'm winning. So, so I would, I, she took the high road, which is, which is interesting. I'm sure she said I'm winning bitches. So she I did. don't know. I don't think she, I don't think that was, I don't know how high the road is. Huh. She put a little. It's nothing wrong with a little. Put a little that little finishing seasoning on it. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So, but how do you feel? I mean, in, when you're not laughing, how do you feel about unprovoked someone body shaming Lizzo or anyone? Like Lizzo was minding her own business. I mean, I'm not a fan of body shaming, but. But what? I, for me, it's more so overall health. Like, are you, is your health okay? But I don't. I don't think it's a, the nice thing to do to body shame someone. If someone is happy and confident in the body that they have, what do you? Why f- does it bother you? What do you feel? How do you feel about uh, magazines and businesses trying to push, uh, being more conscious about pushing? Uh, plus size models I think it's it's almost it's twofold because part of me thinks it's too little too late Mm. uh, and it's a forced attempt kind of like inclusivity and just now you know TV shows instead of having the main white character and the black best friend it's like the black best friend and the gay Asian friend too like it's it's like oh we're trying commercials having interracial couples like we get it you're trying, but you should have noticed this a while ago. Uh, I think my issue with magazines, fashion, and the take that they have had or the stance they've had in terms of what beauty is, is it's only been tailored to one, to one group. And everyone else who doesn't, who falls outside of that group is just left out. You're just not, you're not beautiful. And I think it's so ingrained in our society now that the efforts to reverse it, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's going to take a while before it actually play, it gets into effect. I think it's, there are generations, there are women thousands millions of women in this world who have been affected by this who are struggling with this i know myself as one struggling with this you know you see celebrities they have a baby and a month later two weeks later the day they're walking out of the hospital they're skinny you know they look great and you know you you look at yourself and you think well if beyonce could do it i should be able to do it too and you don't so you know you're you're forced to beat yourself up because you're not at that place forgetting that you know these people probably had trainers before during after their pregnancy they have personal chefs nutritionists they have time to rest and recover and all this stuff so i'm i'm not a fan of body shaming i don't think it's just grown-up bullying that's really what it is. Not everyone has control over what their body does and doesn't do. You know, some people gain weight easily. Some people struggle to lose weight. So it, weight is someone's individual issue. Um, and I think society has taught us that skinny, slim is the way you're supposed to look. And when people try to argue, like I think about how... <laughs> When you lose weight, people compliment you. That's when the compliments start coming. Oh, you look great. You lost weight. Um, Implying that when you hadn't lost the weight, you 
did not look great. So, you know, I think size is a complex topic. It's a very touchy topic. It's it's almost as touchy as probably race, religion, and all those things. Uh, but if someone expresses, because what someone expresses and what someone is on the inside can be two different things. You can express that you're happy with your body, that you're confident with your body, but on the inside you are not happy with your body. Uh, it's no one else's place to discuss, to say what there is to say but then you have the comedic standpoint where you know he's a comedian his job is to joke and make fun of people not condoning that joke not saying that's the joke he should have or had to make but you know we're also a very sensitive culture where everything said done is scrutinized and i Felt like for a while, comedians were the last people who could just kind of say anything. But we're kind of at a place where it's like it's safer to just not talk. Like Even as I'm saying this, I'm trying to be calculated to make sure I don't say something that... It was too late. You already laughed at the poop emoji joke. I mean, but that's funny. Apparently not. It's not funny to Lizzo. It was funny to me. So again, yeah, it's too late for you. It's too, late. it's too late for you there the, 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 this video is locked but and I loaded mean, someone can come for me and i would be upset about that and i'd be hurt about it because i know that i'm working hard trying to lose weight but it's just not working out the way i want it to so you know why do you want to lose weight because i want to fit into my clothes because i've had three kids and i've put on weight with each and every one of them there's a way i want to look for myself and I'm not there yet. Based on what? Based on how I want to look for myself. But what? Why do you want to look that way? Probably societal perception. What I look at other people and see and appreciate is something that I want for myself. Okay. So, what's funny about Ari Spears? Is he looks like a poop emoji? No, <laughs> no, he doesn't. But shortly after, like a week later, like this week or late last week, it came out that uh, he and Tiffany Hatch, I think they're like, there's like a lawsuit or a case against them where basically they uh, did a skit, said slightly sexualized or something like that with, uh, with the underage kid. Uh, back in the day, and it was meant to be it's meant to be funny, but apparently uh, it wasn't. So there's like actual litigation going on. As people said, <laughs> people said Tiffany Haddish was posting scriptures in her Instagram story, so they're like, you know, she did it. <laughs> you know, she's guilty. <laughs> if you start posting them scriptures, boy, oh, you know, you know, it's a wrap. Mm. But. It's just funny. So maybe some some Lizzo fans have some dirt. Because the, the timing was... Impeccable. It was very coincidental. You come for the wrong tribe, they gonna dig. They gonna dig, everybody gonna dig. But you know, you started saying something that I've been wondering, like... We... And this is gonna seem ironic seeing as i'm saying this on our podcast but i think we care way too much what other people say mm -hmm. there's this dude i follow on twitter i can't remember i don't know that i actually know his name but i we connected because of alan and uh he has this there's a, there was a headline there was an opinion piece i don't even know what publication it was printed in, but the headline was we should all know less about each other <laughs> so every time there's like some just outlandish tweet uh, article or whatever where someone's sharing way too much information you know people get on tiktok and like say oh my boyfriend just broke up with me or oh my girl just left me for whatever he'll just retweet it and then <laughs> post that that headline but i really do feel like we give we let way too many uh people we let way too many opinions of others um too many comments of others who have no direct impact 
on our lives live rent free in our heads and it doesn't really make any sense Mm -hmm. like i'll just see a quote and just see the reaction to it and i know twitter isn't the entire population of the world but just you just see like the way you would you just the way people react you would think it just like wrecked their whole lives when they hear a statement from like a public figure that they vehemently disagree with people off the rails like 30 30 piece twitter threads and think pieces galore is it's crazy but uh i mean the Ari spirits thing i mean like you said comedians i feel like that's like the last sacred space or should be comedians have always been on the edge mm-hmm. uh raw no pun intended so it's just it's just weird but and it's clear there are certain celebrities you can't really mess with mm-hmm. otherwise you know it's it's a thing so i guess lizzo's now in that group but yeah when we get done recording since you ain't up on the up and up go go with that ari spears and tiffany haddish thing People, so people are excited because I guess they've been trying to get Tiffany Hatch up out of here for a while saying she's not funny but she's a lot I don't know that she's not fun. to me she's like the female Kevin Hart but Kevin Hart's been able to pivot like I just watched a movie with him the other night him and um, what's his name Marky Mark Uh, the good vibrations guy. His brothers in blue bloods. Wasn't he in the new kids on the block? I can't remember. Um, me time is the name of the movie. It's got Kevin Hart and Marky Mark. You don't know who Marky Mark is? Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Yeah. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was just... I was gonna see how many things you could call it that he's either affiliated with or in before you actually said it. And it was actually pretty good. Like I, I, I appreciate now where Kevin Hart has pivoted professionally. Because as a comedian, there was a time if and I've met Kevin Hart. Like I, I had to work a Miller Coors event, and <laughs> Kevin Hart was one of the. This was before he like really peaked. Um, I did not. I used to not like Kevin Hart. If I saw a movie had Kevin Hart in it, I wouldn't watch it because of the level of foolishness that I anticipated. I don't like foolish comedy. I don't like slapstick comedy. Even this movie kind of teetered on it. I think Marky Mark and um, why don't you just call him Mark Wahlberg? Because I'm already in. Or was Marky Mark it's, like it's Marky Mark and just call him Mark. were both in it, so they kind of like helped balance it out a little bit. There was still some really stupid things that took place in it but that's neither here nor there but i feel like tiffany haddish has kind of gotten herself stuck as the foolish person like the foolish comedian and if she's not careful if she doesn't do another role that shows that she has range she is gonna she is gonna fall off she's not I haven't listened or watched a, a comedy, like a stand-up performance. I've seen her do interviews, and I mean, she's mildly humorous, uh, but her roles are always so flamboyant. And I feel like as a black actress, she need and I, I hate saying this, but I feel like she needs to have more range. Um, somebody would argue, like, you know, a white actress, no one says that they need to have more range, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, we're still in a time where when you're black, you still have to you have to bring the table, set the table, make the food and everything on the table. So I just wish Tiffany had, from my opinion, offered more than just like the loud, obnoxious, funny that's not funny, but comes off as funny because they're loud and obnoxious. Uh, Because, again, I was not a Kevin Hart fan. I don't know that I can even say right now that I am a Kevin Hart fan. But I'm more likely to watch something that he's in because I've seen him do different things. You know, work with Wesley Snipes. That was a serious role. Um, I haven't seen the movie that he played the single dad, but I heard amazing reviews on it. Um, I think I'm just not ready to be emotionally charged like that. So that's why I haven't watched it. But 
I just need more from her. So if people are trying to cancel because she's not funny, I can see, I can see where that that stems from because uh, she just kind of showed up. I don't even remember where it was like one of those weeds that just weren't there and then was there and then Tiffany Haddish was everywhere. Calling a black woman a weed? No. You likening a black woman to a weed? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry. They're, they're trying to get her up out of here. No disrespect, Tiffany. Like, I feel like you're probably really cool in person. It's just what I see of you is just a lot. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have an opinion. I think if they did something that was um, against the law or caused irreparable damage mm -hmm. to someone... Um, you know, I think that there should be consequences. They couldn't just get like a young looking adult. I don't know. Depending upon when they did it in that period of time, things may not have been as sensitive, you know? So do you still hold them to it? Of course. <laughs> people dig up tweets from like 20 years ago and give people five from their job. Um, cause I do wonder about that. Like we do. You know, we cancel, we try to cancel corporate corporations, white people all the time when they did something racist, you know, back in 1984. Maybe they're not racist anymore. I'm not saying, like, we all know where my opinion usually stands, but, you know, think about all of the things that even in the moment you th thought was, like, look at R. Kelly. Like, there's a video of him peeing on a girl and nobody really, people were just like, that's weird. But no one really was like, this is a man peeing on a girl. He married Aaliyah. People weren't really I mean, like, and if Chappelle did a skit about this it. is a man marrying a child. So not saying he, he deserves everything that's coming to him. But just think of all of the instances as we were growing up, generations past that were allowed to happen. That was just kind of like, I mean, the way corporate men used to speak to women. That was the culture. You know, you still have those men who are in circulation because they're, you know, top dogs in, in organizations. But at what point do you draw the line of this was what was acceptable at the time and times have changed and you just need to learn the changes of time or we're going to hold you accountable for being current in the time period of which you grew up in. Because I'm sure there's stuff we're doing now that we see is as acceptable that our kids are going to grow up and be like, how could you not see the problem with that? How did you not see the issue with that? But it was just a cultural norm. So, I mean, I guess I just wonder where is the line drawn in terms of giving grace? Like, this is unfortunately the time period you like now I'm not going to give grace to people who, you know, had slaves like you knew you shouldn't have had slaves. But they're just things that make you wonder where where that line is drawn when is it they get ex an excused absence or excused because they were of this time period as opposed to someone who's doing that thing right now you know there's you got the me too movement and that became a thing because right now these acts are not so, um, socially acceptable but in the 80s, 70s, 60s, you know, it was socially acceptable acceptable to, you know, sexually harass, you know, a female secretary or, you know, uh, whoever worked in an office and that was female. That was a, that was just the sign of the time. It's not right now because the standards of which we are to look at each other is different. So I don't know, just a random tangent thought. Yeah, I don't know how that could ever be acceptable. I think there, I think there's a difference between something being uh, acceptable and um, when you say acceptable, do you mean within the group of people who are doing it, or just like a greater society? So, like sticking with the men sexually harassing women in the workplace like obviously it was acceptable to the men mm -hmm. but do you think the women felt that way no 
by majority. I think it depends on the woman. Like maybe some. Well, felt the like majority it was, of women. Do you think majority of women felt like it was they acceptable? Just felt like that's what men do. Boys being boys. I mean, think about that statement. I've heard older women say it too. So those are just hmm. social terms to accept a social norm. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm not saying any of this is okay. No, I'm, no, I'm no. Sure that I'm just saying there are lots of things that have happened. Well, it, but it, the reason why I ask is because it kind of helps me get to my point. Although I didn't, I, I wasn't very, I didn't ask the question very well. Is that um, people may have gotten away with it, mm-hmm. but I don't know that it was. I don't know. Speaking that topic specifically, I don't know that it was ever acceptable. Like, I know my father wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, can how do I feel about people being held like women coming back twenty years later, saying this man made me feel this way on set or did this to me in the office? Do I think that that's within the statute of limitations? Absolutely, because mm-hmm. I don't know that nineteen eighty, nineteen seventy, two thousand twenty. Like I don't know where it's ever been acceptable to against her will put your hands on a woman in any way sexually physically like it's just not so I think if someone brings like a, a cold case if you will or a cold instance from years before and it's got merit and it actually happened and someone can prove it get them up out of here this is what I feel with, with that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, choices have consequences. They do. Actions have consequences, and those consequences aren't always immediate. Sometimes they're delayed. Sometimes they're years down the road. Like I, you know, um, I, I just I, I remember reading about uh, Emmett Till because mm-hmm. you know they. They found the the woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she's in Raleigh somewhere. Or, they were, or maybe the last address they had for her was in Raleigh before they they found her this last time. But a grand jury uh, elected not to indict her. Um, dang, I just sucked my teeth. I was doing really well. And uh, you know, so a lot of people felt like that was the last real opportunity. Uh, we had to get like some true justice mm-hmm. for for Mattel, and I and I feel that like she more than likely within the court of law, or within the eyes of the law, won't ever be held accountable for again, you know, playing a role in Mattel being killed. Um, so it's like, but people were saying in the comments like, "Oh, she's this many years old." And, you know, she's ailing and she's not healthy and, you know, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. (laughs) Like, I don't, I like, I don't care if you legally blind, bedridden, if you did it and all evidence would suggest she did what is being alleged. Absolutely. I mean, they got Cosby and I'm not, I'm I'm just just talking. I'm, I'm not, I think it can be subjective though, too. I think there are some instances where some people, you know, are willing to brush certain wrongs under the rug. And there are other instances where it's like, no, we need to throw you into the jail. Well, of course. But you run that risk when you do certain. Like I said, when you commit an act or you you decide to be racist or you decide to be uh, you decide to sexually harass women in the workplace like you open yourself up mm-hmm. to accountability it might not happen or it might not happen you know in in the vicinity of when it when you did it it might be years down the road but you know you kind of open yourself up but yeah absolutely like it doesn't like depending upon who it is wh- who it happened to um yeah things can be you know people can look the other way on things that yeah that happens all the time but uh, no, I, I just think in a general sense, I don't think that 
I'm okay with people being held accountable for things they did, even if it didn't happen recently. Even if it happened years ago, I'm perfectly okay with it. And that's for, for myself too. Mm-hmm. Like anybody, like you, you have some, you have to live with the consequences of the choices and decisions that you make. Um, and sometimes not all those decisions are made um, with ill will. Mm. Sometimes you think you're doing the right thing or the best thing. And it may turn out that it wasn't. It's like they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm-hmm. So. That's a fact. Yeah. So, speaking of white people. <laughs> Did you hear? Your boy, Joey B, decided to cancel ten thousand dollars in student loans oh. for most borrowers. Should have been more. Ninety-five percent of borrowers, whom are to have their student loans forgiven, make I think seventy-five thousand dollars or less. I think that's the majority of they should cancel seventy five thousand <laughs> loans. Uh, the announcement came a couple of weeks ago, I think. The week uh I think the week you and Silas recorded. So I guess last week. Wow, time flies. Was it last week? No, the week before last. Week before. Maybe it happened after we recorded. <clears throat> I think that week. So it had been rumored for a while that a decision was was looming. You know, they'd push back the the start of uh they pushed back the the end of the student loan repayment pause a couple of times uh but the the administration had been kind of mum on what they were doing so all you could really hear uh was rumors and reports the uh the pause was set to expire i think on august 31st i think mm-hmm. and um I think they made the announcement for like a week and a half <laughs> before that despair. So a lot of people was like, bro, am I going to have to pay these loans, start paying these loans back or not? Like, let me know. And yeah, he announced $10,000, which was one of his initial campaign promises. Things that he said he would do. Was, I thought he said he would cancel student loan debt. I think he said he would for people making under a certain amount, he would wipe, wipe them out. And then I think he came back and said he'd cancel 10,000 per borrower. Because he his his thing was he wasn't sure he had the uh, executive authority to cancel like just completely wipe it out. I mean, test for it out. everybody. Let's find out. <laughs> Only way to know if you have the authority is to use it. So uh, they landed on ten thousand because they're also worried about um, rich people being given a free pass. Because I always find it interesting how rich people making decisions try to act like they're trying to keep rich people from benefiting when. <laughs> like majority of these bills don't touch them. They no, they, they only not, help. They only help not rich people. Um, every everything is about the middle class. Middle class carries this country. But anyways, um, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Raphael Warnock, and uh, your boy Chuck Schumer have been trying to get Biden to consider fifty thousand per borrower, which I think would have all but eliminated. Um, the black wealth gap. I think, <laughs> or some some statistic. Like, I think it would like if they had done that, it would have immediately l- like raised uh the black net worth in this country by like a significant percentage, like overnight. That. Which is why they, which is why a they lot of people say that. that's why they didn't do it. But land on ten thousand per borrower. That's not so. Uh, and I think two thousand per borrower for for a household un- making under what was it one fifty one seventy five I think one, so one something one forty five something like that. So it's not enough. This was as I was getting ready to say. This was a very uh, interesting decision, which probably means it was the right one because it seems like nobody was happy or n- neither of the vocal parties were happy mm-hmm. like you have the people who are really liberal saying like fifty thousand, everything and then you have the people who are like no i struggled i <laughs> you shouldn't pay i don't want to i don't want to pay for anybody's so i feel like this was 
the best decision because it seems like nobody's happy. Both sides are upset. But this puts it on the table. I mean, then he this could is, have this, at least done 25 in medicine. <laughs> this could be a once in a lifetime thing or, but it's been done before. So it's precedent. So that means, it, you know, depending upon. Student loan debt cancellation has been done before. No, I'm, well, it's, it's been done, but like, usually it's been, oh, if uh, you were serviced by this lender and we found out that this lender was doing oh, like well, shady stuff, but no, but I'm saying this just like wide scale student loan cancellation, mm -hmm. like it's been, this is it being done and that's precedent. So let's just say it couldn't happen again, which is why a lot of people are, are taking, you know, a lot of people say, well, we should fix the system, That's not just not just wipe out the debt. Um, I think you could do both, could afford to do both. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 10,000, I mean, 10 G's is 10 G's. It is, but it's and, still not enough. Well, because it's it's not like, I mean, 10 G's usually covers one semester at most schools. This is true. That's so if you did four semesters, that's still that's. But you're only, but you see, most people jump to thinking about people who completed like a four year degree mm -hmm. or a four year or a two year graduate degree. There are some people who only did like two years or Which only I did only did a handful. Of, and that 10,000 is significant. No, it's not. No, there people are people who have not completed degrees typically end up owing more debt than people who have. But what I'm saying is there there are some who the ten thousand or twenty thousand if you got Pell Grants would like based upon what Did either you get what either Grants? either no based on you, what they've Oh y'all are rich. You didn't get Pell Grants? No, don't be don't be talking about whether I'm rich or not you didn't on qualify for the Pell Grant. I don't know whether I qualified. I didn't get any. Where's my like we have a whole lot of marital reevaluation to do. You didn't qualify. I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't have any Pell Grants. Wow. Oh. To be privileged and black. <laughs> okay. Uh, I. I'm, okay, Don and Doris. I'm sitting up. In, well, I, look, I keep telling my dad. I keep waiting for the day where he like. It's there. Gives me the. You didn't qualify for the Pell Grant. <laughs> Stay qualifying for the Pell Grant. Call me Jessica Pell. That's how much I was granted. Look, I got, well, not as much as you, but I got almost as much student loan debt as you, right? So I ain't rich. Because if I was rich, I had joints would have been paid off. But anyways. But you didn't get the Pell Grant. <sighs> there are some people. Somebody had money. Who the 10000 or 20000 it's making. It's all, it's either from what they've currently paid what they have left outstanding um it's it's significant so it's, i don't it's, think it's i don't i bad. don't think that we should overlook those people in their situations and just say blank in a blanket sense that it's not enough um because there's an argument to be made that hey it's still a loan you take loans knowing that you got to pay the money yeah, back and people took ppp loans and this didn't is true. pay them back this is true look i'm not I'm not anti student loan cancellation and I'm not saying that I don't think that there's an argument that it could have been more, but at the same time, I'm just saying the nature of a loan is that you pay the money back normally with interest, especially I if it's, just, if it's past a certain point. I so was just playing it to the blood of Jesus. And like, oh, <laughs> there was a couple people who I was, was like, hoping it would just wash away my loans. There was a couple people who was like, bro, I wasn't going to pay them joints back. No way. Yeah. So, um, I'm not saying I was one of those people, but yeah. I was leaving it, you know, take everything to God. In so, prayer. so you're not happy? No. One, because I, <laughs> I did the math and I'm like, I still owe somebody's salary in. You owe a, you owe, owe a wagoneer. <laughs> the deluxe or a wagoneer. Tile. And Pretty, I only like got one limited. Degree, like one degree. That's all I got. No masters, no nothing. So I guess I can't pursue higher education. But um, no, I don't think it's enough. I think it's just a continuous cycle of we can't even the playing field. If it's if it's known that because you have this system that has told people that you need to finish school, 
go to college, get an education, and that will get you the money to pay back this loan. And that's not a sure thing. I mean, in since I start, I mean, you've had we've had recession, we've had inflation, we've had pandemics, all of these promises of this is what you need to do to be successful don't work for everybody. I know plenty of people who have degrees and they're not doing degree worthy or what one would consider worthy of the degree they've earned. So you've got a crooked system, people trying to get into schools based off of the name because you're told that if you go to this school, your alumni are going to help you get into job. I have reached out to alumni of UNCG on LinkedIn and they don't even message me back. Um, and they work for the organization I want to go for. So that's BS. In that I feel well. like you've managed to do all right, despite. I have, but I do wonder if. Could I have still gotten where I am without my degree? And it, it's a catch-22 because I feel like when I didn't have my degree, it came up a lot. And now that I have my degree, I feel like <laughs> no one has asked. Like, I haven't even asked someone to. I just want someone to ask me to prove that I have it. Like, I remember, here's, here's a photocopy of it. I remember when I was um, I was negotiating for my, my salary, my current position. Um, and it came in. I expected it to be less than what I was making leaving uh, the industry I was in. Uh, but it felt a little low, especially considering that I had a master's, not just like any man, I had a master's in business and I was applying uh, for a management position uh, where a lot of the, the principles I learned could be applied. And I remember asking my, my boss, <laughs> I said, was my, uh, was my degree factor then? He was like, I was like, yeah, but it didn't really. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I got a whole master's degree, and you telling me like it doesn't play, like it doesn't factor in in, in my negotiation. So maybe I didn't negotiate well enough or strongly enough, which is probably the case. But uh, yeah, I, it's interesting when you say that because I definitely had that that moment mm -hmm. in real life where it was like, oh, it's great, you got letters after your name. It ain't PhD though. <laughs> So, yeah, we've got a we've got a broken system. Um, school costs far too much. But is it is it the yes. fault of the system? The si Let me ask the question. No, you don't even have this rude. I do. What am I gonna ask? Is it the fault of the system? <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not my question. It's, it's part of the question. So it's your is question? it? No, but it's not my full question. Okay, go ahead. Is it? No. <laughs> Let me get it out. Is it the fault of the system or is it the fault of our parents? Did our parent did our parents fail us? It's everybody's fault. Okay. Everybody, but you said that are, are our parents the system? Yes. Are they in cahoots? Are, are, they have been indoctrinated <laughs> by the system. Our parents are in cahoots. It's, it's, it's well, a, look, I know for me, uh, I was told in no uncertain terms that, yes, you will go to college because I was it. I was the last one. Mom didn't go. I think she did like a little bit of community college. Pops. Psh, Donald. <laughs> Donald, no. Daniel, no. So it was like, you it. Because ain't no more babies. Like, there's no nobody after you. So you got to go. Uh, now, I didn't have to go where I went. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I don't think purposefully, but I intentionally did not seek out different uh, options. I was really only looking at two schools and that's just because the whole process, one, I didn't really want to do it. So like, I didn't want to go to college. I just went cause I was told I had to. So what were you going to do? I don't, well, nothing. I was going to go to college. I always knew I was going, but I didn't, that didn't mean I wanted to go. What did you want to go? I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to go to college. I don't know what I wanted. I just knew it wasn't college. Okay. It wasn't like I didn't dream of getting a 1800 or whatever on my SAT so I could go to any college I wanted to. I just already was told that I was going. So it was just like, all right, let me go through the motions and go. Um, so when the time came, I was just only looking at, at two schools. One of them, I happened to have a connection. My football coach in high school, one of my football coaches, his daughter worked at financial aid. So it seemed like, oh, this is, this is it. This is my sign. Um, 
my grades could have been stronger. Which probably could have gotten me some more. some more free money that I didn't have to pay back. But um, you could have been poor, and then you would have gotten the Pell Grant. <laughs> could have been poor, but I didn't, and I didn't consider uh, state schools or anything like that. So that's that's I don't think that's on the system. I think that's on my parents. Number one, since they were the ones who told me. But they didn't know, so that's part of the system. There's, no, I know. There no, needs to be some because I feel like I was faulted because there were no. There needs to be some well, kind of structure for people who don't come from a background of college education. But, but why did they not know? Like, these are your kids, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, and you're you're telling them that they have to make they have to do something mm-hmm. that could have very significant financial repercussions on them down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, so to say they didn't know. Well, is it because... Because of no, the system. Are you going to let me ask no, the question? No, because I know your question. Because no, you the don't. Because system is ingrained in your parents as well, where they believe that if my child takes out these loans, goes to school, the end result is going to make it worth it. Because the thing, the thing with loans, you get a loan to, to get something. I get a loan to buy a car. I use that car to transport me to the places I need to go to pay back that loan. I get a loan. I buy a house. I buy that house so that I have a place to rest so that I can then use that car to get to the place to buy, to make the money, to pay back that loan. The the capitalistic structure of America is so ingrained in us that the borrowing of money is normal. And then you have people who, if unfortunately you and I have gone to college, our college experiences were very different, but the knowledge that and wisdom that we can impart into our children is different than what was put into us, which is the point I was trying to initially make is that there's not enough support for kids who don't come from families with college backgrounds, because unless you have done it, you don't understand it. Watching ABC shows with kids who go to college is not enough to truly understand the culture shock of living on campus the the structure of getting yourself to class getting yourself like how does the lunchroom work how does you know how do dorms work how do you know you need to have lived in it to be able to understand it and that is an issue for minorities for blacks and and it separates you know color whereas you have white for the most part a majority of white kids their parents went to college they met in college whatever they understand the collegiate experience so they're able to provide them more wisdom like we know like right now if we were in you know if we're fast forward 10 years my thought would be okay solace i want you to take instead of taking ap classes take college classes take you know classes at um, cpcc and get college credit graduate from high school with a with a diploma as well as with um an associate's degree you're two years ahead now but that's a lived experience an experience we've lived that we can pass on to our kid and it's their responsibility to take the wisdom we didn't have that advantage because we had two sets of parents who did not do college who did not reap the benefits of college your dad your parents did well without going to college so if they did well without going to college i can only assume that their mindset was if we force our kid to go to college he can surpass where we are but unless you do college truly do college emerge immerse yourself into it recognize the benefit of state college understand that by the time it all boils down unless you're going to harvard yale or stanford for the most part every other school doesn't like it doesn't make a dip that significant of a difference um i don't know that that's true but okay continue that's my point um so i think that the system has corrupted everybody it's it, we live in a capitalistic world in a capitalistic America. And so it's not, it's, it's always about the gain of others. And a lot of these, and these kids who are succeeding in colleges, like I said, they, they have the example. They have people who have been through it. The first generation of anything struggles because they need to figure it out for everybody else. 
we had to figure it out and now we will pass that on to our kids actually uh i plan to present our children with uh, a number of options that don't necessarily include college because i don't one think that college is for everyone and two i don't think that you should force a child Mm -hmm. to do something always i don't think that you should always force a child to do something that they don't want to do especially when it comes to their future uh now it's also if i'm going to take that position it's also my responsibility to prepare her to take other avenues because Mm -hmm. yes you do need to be of some a contribution to your society, your family, whatever. But I mean, yeah, I, I think the system is, I think the system is obviously uh, needs to be fixed, mm-hmm. but you know, I think there are other, there are other alternatives that work better than the current system. It's just not as glamorized. I think, I, don't, I agree with you in that wholeheartedly. I don't want to push college down the throat of our children. I think that because of the simple fact that we don't want to force it down the throat of our children, that they're all going to end up going to college and becoming like ridiculous scholars. Um, because that's just, I, I, in my heart, want them to all go into the arts and be that's you. fashion designers and dancers and actors and actresses, whatever. Um, One of them I want to just play video games professionally but I like is going to become an accountant because she's already amazing with numbers like they're all or she may just want to play video this, games professionally no she may just want to be be a gamer no and you can do that in today's you world can. you couldn't do that when we were going to school you can twitch yeah. didn't exist youtube yeah. wasn't like that but it is now she's people not. making buku she's not gonna be a gamer no but you why not she's just because not. you don't want her to be she's just you not. wanted her to, you to see just like my parents wanted me to go to college. You don't want her to be a gamer. But see, that's but, the problem. No, no, no. That's the problem. No, it's not a problem. No, it is a problem. I have. I, d- I don't want her to become a gamer. I won't stop her from becoming a gamer. No, but you're not even you're not even allowing the, because, the possibility of it in like your mind. Games. Um, but it's not about. She said she wanted to be a secretary. But okay. it's not about. And I said, you grow up and you learn everything you need it's to do. Not, and you can become a secretary. It's not about it's you. It's not about me. It's not my future. It's her future. It's not. My job but is to guide your her. bias will will in will in will has no choice but to impact your decision making when it comes to the things that she may or may not want to do is what i'm trying to get you to see but that's, and that that's is default that would come from friends that would come from anyone you surround yourself with i'm not i'm not i'm not akin to a friend of my my child i'm the parent <laughs> like we're saying, not that's not the same lot, thing there are people who chose to go to nc state because their friends also went to nc state there it's very the societal norms are hard to break from when I'm, everybody's doing it what so, i'm saying is is what what i was trying to bring light to is that there are so many different ways that you could like if i wanted to be involved with video games right like when i was growing up i would have thought that i needed to go to some sort of computer science program mm-hmm. because I wouldn't think that you could just play video games professionally. I would think that you would need to learn how to develop them, know how to market them. Then maybe you get in with a developer and then, oh, okay, now I learn how to code. And so maybe I kind of work my way around to really being involved in the process. But now you telling me that I can actually get paid six figures, potentially, you know, top percent, top two, three, four, five percent. I can get paid six figures for actually doing something that I love to do and I'm obsessed with and people actually watch me do it pay to watch me do it like i don't need now i don't need to go that route of loaning potentially or getting a scholarship go to go to school go to class take all these general classes that i may not really be interested in but the but the school tells me i have to take mm-hmm. when i can just do it right here i can get started now so like if solace was into video games like that she could get started now and then by the time she's if she stays with it, by the time she's 16, 17, who knows what a channel could look like. So there's so much more opportunity now that, yeah, the system needs to be fixed, but I don't think that we should be so fixated on correcting it when there's so much other opportunity uh, thanks to that capitalistic society that we live in that we that we don't like, but 
has afforded us all these different opportunities to really uh, provide for ourselves and make careers for ourselves out of what we want. So, you know, uh, that's just what I'm saying. Like, I wish I had, like, I wish a lot of what's available now in terms of like YouTube, Twitch, like a lot of the, a lot of the things that are popular now, like the creator, you know, economy, uh, influencer economy was big back when I was in school because I used to kill on 2K. Like when I was, I would kill it. Like, I was nice. I was real nice. And you can ask anybody who played. I, I was nice. I could like, I could have been an E, been like esports, all that. But I'm not. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just sad. I just the missed out. I six fig- I could have made six figures. The point I was trying to make is that a lot of it also comes down to the position in life your parents are in. Some people are lucky and, you know, they get exposed to things. But if we aren't in the position to expose our children to things, to be able to afford to expose our children to things, they don't know all the options available to them. If we don't have the funds set aside to say, okay, you can either use this money to start a business or go to college or put the down payment on an investment property and rent out a room to a roommate. You, like there are Wasn't room- your mom's a realtor? You don't think your dad knew that there was trade school for plumbers? Like, you don't but think... Our, our system ingrained in them that it's all about the education. So there are tradesmen who are making six figures, but they were looked down upon because it's, it's suit and tie, that white collar versus blue collar. So, I mean, but they don't talk about, they don't I mean, talk I'm about those things. A lot of people are plumbers because their dad was a plumber. Their uncle was a plumber. You know, somebody said you need to do something with yourself. Go apprentice here. That's usually the process of it. There are very few people who like their actual, maybe now people know like this, there's a lot you can do as a plumber <laughs> in terms of growing your own business and from that perspective but i'm sure people who are plumbers it's either a family thing where my dad did it i just learned it i picked it up because it's not usually it's not formal it's apprenticeship so you know what's crazy is i've heard of throughout my life i've always heard of work shortages i ain't never heard of no plumber shortage or electrician shortage or contractor shortage or welder shortage. Never. On all these other W two jobs and all these other all the white collar jobs, there'll be shortages. Cause people are always trying to move on the up and up. Plumbers st- pipes stay bursting, leaking, rusting. But that's also not people a keep putting job. people keep putting coffee grounds down the garbage disposal. Plumber, they never been hurting for work. But that's not a glamorous job. That's why people don't. No, I could be. I mean, it could this, be. It's, it's quick all job. About <laughs> the dude who came out here was. I talk about it. Twenty not Twenty minutes. But there's also a lot of work that goes into to well, gaining. Well, yeah. I mean, that's to be expected. You're not just going to waltz into a six figure career. You're going to have to put some sweat equity sure. into it. Going back to my original point before you interrupted. Um, I'm just saying, they never been a plumber shortage. I'm sure there has, but you have needed. <laughs> them. Never been. You've never needed them when there was a shortage. <laughs> all um, right. We'll, we'll do some research. A lot of it comes down to <laughs> what you as a parent, what you are able to offer your children, what doors you're able to walk them through, what opportunities, what places you're able to expose them to. It's not an easy thing. It's sacrifices that you have to make in your generation. But, you know, I think, you know, if you think biblically, the Bible says a, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That That statement stands out to me so much because it's not just about an inheritance for your children. You're supposed to establish yourself in such a way that you have provided for your children's children. Now, I don't always think that's, I don't think that falls just monetarily, but I think that is, is wisdom impacted as well, because I think an inheritance is something that you can gain. Knowledge can be considered part of an inheritance. So I think where you are, that's why they was talking about if you're born in a certain zip code and raised in a certain zip code that can determine where you go in life 
because that's what you're around. That's the environment you're in. So I just think that there's a lot more to it than just there's so there's so much unseen programming that we have that this generation is start that millennials, maybe the Gen Z's, they're the ones right after. I, I don't know who's right after. Um, that that we're recognizing and we're going to we're working to break, but we were at a disadvantage because you know we're of the generation where our parents are boomers and I don't think my parents are boomers. What no. are, I think they're Generation X. Yeah. Um, but they were programmed that get this loan, go to college, and the rest of your life will be made. So I was raised, you know, become the top three doctor, lawyer, engineer. I'm not any of those things. I'm not built to be any of those things. I can't, couldn't push myself to become those. I took engineering courses. I sucked at them. And I realized that I was living for someone else's dream. I grew up very much so with my parents saying, get me my degree, not my degree, their degree. It was for them. It was for their clout. So I think, you know, we came from a generation of parents who your child's accomplishment is for you. And I get that you have kids and, and, but I think I, as a parent, I'm in a place where I recognize that I had sex and I got pregnant and that's why my kid is here. They didn't ask to be here. They didn't send an invitation to join this family. I made a decision. That was the repercussion of that decision. The blessing of their life. They're here. My job now is to make sure that I put everything that I can from my life learned experience so that they can be successful and live their life for them. That wasn't my portion for me. I th at least I can only speak for my parents, but my existence is to, for their honoring for them to be like, they were, they're successful because they have a successful child. They, they, that's, that's what my existence is that at least from, you know, the West African perspective, you have a kid and then your kid takes, ends up taking care of you. It'd be nice if my kid takes care of me, but I'm not raising my kid with the intention that they owe me a debt because they didn't ask to be here. Whereas a lot of us from, they do ask you for a lot of food though. They can, they, repay, they can repay and that. They're really expensive too. Yeah. So, I mean, they can pay me back in that, pay, yeah. in that regard. Absolutely. But I think the times have shifted and we're recognizing that the traditional way of which we were taught, this is how life is supposed to be done for it to be lived well is wrong. I'm even at the point where I'm like, why do I work five days a week? Like when there's a short work week, all the work gets done. Why do we need that extra day? Maybe this next generation will actually implement a four or three day work week or half days. Or you could be a gamer <laughs> influencer and then you could work whenever you want to, as long as you get them videos uploaded okay. and get your views. So another part of the, uh, another part of this, which I wanted to get into before we sort of went off on this, on this tangent, not a tangent, but we went off on this extended, um, conversation, mm -hmm. um, was, how do you feel about the people who are upset about student loans because they they paid their loans off and they say they don't they had to suffer? And so it's, it's the word that's always used, and I don't know why. Um, maybe it is suffering. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, I guess maybe. I mean, everybody's experience is their own, but had to suffer or struggle to pay back their loans. So why should somebody else? get a free 10 G's to pay theirs off, which would ultimately fall back on the taxpayers anyway. How do you feel about that? I mean, there are lots of people who, that would be like being white and being like, oh, my grandfather had slaves, so he didn't have to work as hard. It's a bit of, it's, it's a, bit of a leap. It's a bit of an, it's a bit of an extreme. I, but that's, but that's, <laughs> I mean, that's the tone that you take. It's Things just, happen. So many other examples you could have I, used. You know me, I'm an extremist. And I don't I know why you way, had to jump to. I go all the way and then I, I ease it back. But get over it. Like, shut up. Get over yourself. Things happen. Things happen. 
this is this is life. This is the course of life. If you were able to pay off your student loans, it's probably because there's a little bit of privilege in your life that allowed you to pay them off in a timely manner. I know a lot of people who, you know, they bought a house. You think they did it themselves? No, their dad gave them ten thousand dollars for a down payment. You know, there there are privileges that people are so accustomed to because they're the expectation. It's what they're used to that they don't even recognize that it's a privilege. So yes, I I will acknowledge you probably did have to work hard to pay off your student loans because you were working a job. This is a debt that you took on. But there are so many people we, we, you probably voted for the guy who filed bankruptcy for so many things and is able to still be wealthy. Like they're they're I don't really care about these people who whine, like whine, complain. That's fine. You are entitled to the right to complain. I would probably feel some type of way if I busted my butt and paid off my many thousand dollars of student loans. But you know what? It's not going to change everything, anything. The government's not going to cut me a check for $10,000 because I paid off my student loan. If I paid off my student, the, the only reason why they're not paid off is one, because I just got my degree like three years ago. Anyway, but they're not paid off. That's just the circumstance I'm in. There are plenty of people. There are people who got PPP loans. There are people who didn't get PPP. Like life is one of the most uncertain things and it's about timing and, and where you are to be favored. And if you're not at the right place at the right time, you know, maybe you shouldn't have been an overachiever paying your loans. Maybe you should have lived on faith that somebody would grant a year of Jubilee and debt would be canceled. That's where I am right now. I am waiting for the year of Jubilee where they cancel debt. It's just all debt. Like, your house is paid off. Everything's debt. That's what they used to do in Israel. I think it was like every 50 years, there was a year of Jubilee, and everybody's debt was wiped out. So, um, because I wanted to hop in here. (laughs) This is clearly, we should have led with this part, because you're as animated as you've been all night. A few things. One, I disagree with uh, your use of uh, privilege or your thoughts on people probably being privileged. I think that's another word that gets used a lot of times. Although I think relatively speaking, we all have an element of privilege, we're all privileged, I think in some form or fashion when compared to somebody else. Um, we're priv- extremely privileged I'm the child of when you, I mean, you still, your life now, someone could look at you and say, you're, you don't you're want privileged. It. Anyways, you know, so, um, don't envy me. So I, I don't think that you can look at people and say, just because they're complaining about having paid off their student loans, that they're coming from a place of privilege. No, they're coming from a place that they paid their loans off and they feel like, and they were probably privileged to pay their loans <laughs> no. off. And I, they just feel like, you know, that is not fair. And it's Life not, is not fair. Is it right? It's not fair. It's absolutely not fair. You don't give Saul's a cookie um, after dinner. She says that's not fair. <laughs> oh, that's my, fa- I mean, I say life isn't fair all the time. So we all know that's my favorite saying, one of my favorite sayings, but no, I mean, it's, I mean, just, it's just not, but there's just such a problem. May I hope it's not with, with mankind, but just at least with society in that we always want, we, we can't let somebody else can't have something better than than we have but it that's like a lie think about the lottery no no no. but think let me let, let me people are willing to put money in for the that's what i'm saying but no people get the people but people are fine with it when they don't win it's like oh i didn't win because you know it's just a chance no, no i'm never i'm never fine with that one in the lottery <laughs> i gotta put money into this i need to win it but you get over it um okay but but specifically like with issues like this Right. People are most people are unable to see that. Yeah, I paid mine off. But there are other people out there who are in worse uh, condition than I am or in a worse situation than I am. And this is going to give them some relief to hopefully better their lives. People are unable to look at the fact that I don't always have to benefit because somebody else benefits. And I think that's just such a problem Mm -hmm. in general. And it's really amplified. Uh with how a lot of people are but are this acting. But country's not designed for us to care about other people. Um no, it but they play it up, 
right? In certain instances, like when there when there's a there's a there's a great story, be it sports or in the news, um, people in 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 certain tribes, church praying for people, no matter even though you know that they be doing <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Um, there there is an element of Americanism where it's like we play up, oh, you know, we're all in this together. We want other people. We want you to do well. Um, all lives matter, right? Like there is that, whether it's of whether it's actually genuine or not, that's totally different discussion. But it is pumped out and it is played up. Uh, but I just think it's a problem, and I think it's unfortunate that a lot of people feel that way. Like I didn't benefit, so nobody else should. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I think about like think about the people like who invested with Bernie Madoff right like toward the end and even people who were there beginning but didn't pull their you know didn't pull their money out like how many people emptied their life savings Mm -hmm. into his scheme and lost everything and got not even a fraction of it back right like just think about that how so many of these schemes and these these businesses they pray on people who want that American dream, who, who are very, uh, what's the word impressionable. Mm -hmm. And how often are those people taken advantage of and left with nothing? So me, I'm actually happy that the little, the little guy is actually getting looked out for because so often they're not, they're all, they've been overlooked. Mm -hmm. So, um, as someone who's paid off some loans, someone who still has loans to, to be paid off. Like I said it before when we talked about it before we went to Vegas. If they do it, great. If not, we're going to pay them. But I think it's, I think it's great. Uh, and I, and I'll, 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 I'll bear the burden as a taxpayer uh, for, you know, however many people getting $10,000 of, of their, or up to 20 uh, of their student loans forgiven because it's worth it mm-hmm. to me. Because if you look at, student loan debt and how it directly affects black people in this country, specifically people who I would be most likely to have a community with. I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling how much more it affects black people than, than other demographics. Uh, so if, when you look at the black home ownership, when you look at black net worth, if this can help those statistics improve because you don't, you're not saddled with so much student debt, student loan debt. So now that you you're able to have a lower debt to income ratio. So now you can actually go get a house and which is for our community, a vehicle of generational wealth, somewhere where you can lay your head and you don't have to worry about rents going, rent prices going through the rent numbers going through the roof. If that does it for hundreds of thousands of people, it's worth it to me as a taxpayer to bear that burden. And and what what person, <laughs> like what genuine person, wouldn't be like wouldn't be happy to do that? Because it's real easy to be all lives matter when you're you're saying it from a distance, right? When you're watching mm-hmm. people debate uh, abortion on TV, or when you're watching. Um, protests and you say all lives matter or blue lives matter like it's real easy to say it then but when something tangible can actually be done to help all lives matter right to help uh, people um, better take care of their of their kids or to to further their their um, financial well-being oh I'm not benefiting from it so I'll, then I'm not I'm not for it so like you, I'm just like, yo, get over it. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, nobody, it is, nobody, it, I don't, it is what it is. It is what it is. Because I mean, think about all the billionaires that are making all the tax credits. Like no one is losing the, these same people who are upset about 10,000. No one's concerned. Like they're not voicing about how Bezos is able to write off however many millions and not really be one of the people who should be contributing so that you don't have to bear the burden of the taxes affecting you. It, it, it's as just like you mentioned, you know, you feel good stories and all of that. 
at the end of the day, this is very much so an every man for himself country. And there are there's a there are pockets of people who care for the greater good of just humanity. There are good people. I don't doubt that people who recognize like this is overall like it doesn't have to affect me immediately. But just knowing that it's blessing other people. There are some people who genuinely just like blessing people, like being nice to people, like people benefiting whatever words you want to use. So there are those people who are fine with this. Like, oh, yeah, I paid off my student loan debts. But it's nice to see that other people are going to have the liberty. The liberty. That makes it such a big difference. But there are some people who... You get emotional? Huh? You get emotional? Your eyes... Are, no, I held in a sneeze. Oh, okay. Um, but I, like, I didn't really think this was very <laughs> emotional topic. only care about themselves. Yeah. And until those people... It comes back, I mean, I've said this in many different ways for different topics. Until the right people feel the pain, they won't recognize that they need to care about the issue. Right. And this is one of those things. There are people who, yes, they had a large amount of student loan debt and they paid it off. But it didn't hurt them to pay it off. Well, it may have hurt them, but I don't. But it doesn't matter. You were able like, to do it. You were able, well, you do it, you're able to do it. And you shouldn't be. Like that's it doesn't make it any less of an accomplishment mm-hmm. or any less it's of something done. that you should be proud of. Like you did it, um, and it just so happens that people, other people's fortunes are good enough that they won't have to go through that same struggle you but went through, still and that's not some of it off. I mean, I'd be oh yeah, of course. I'm sure, there'd be people. I could understand being mad if people's entire there are some people deaths. whose entire what they have either what they have left or what they accumulated yeah, is I being have a paid off. Who posted and he was like. Uh, I'm so thankful that my 19,900 and something dollars of student loans are covered now. Yeah. Um, and he was like, if you're going to keep, if you're going to whine, you can whine on somebody else's comments. Um, and I was happy for him. I was like, how great. And I, and he went to Johnson and Wales. So I know yeah. he, and I, he, I know he's been paying off a lot of his loans. So the fact that it's like, wow, you made it down under 19,000 under 20,000 which is the threshold um that's amazing i'm happy for you that i you take that 20,000 away from me and i still still have a whole salary to pay um but i just i think that's just the difference in humankind like some people just don't have good hearts i i hate to say, i feel like that's just the easiest way to say it but some people just have selfish hearts or they they lack empathy or I like selfish hearts. Um, their heart is selfish. And it's like, if you get it, I deserve it too. And that's part of the problem with this country and why certain groups haven't been able to advance because of the same people who don't recognize the issues that blacks have, Latinos have, Native Americans have, Asian Americans have, how we are steps behind and evening the playing field. Oh, well, if you if you erase debt or if you do this for black people, then what about me? I'm going to be at a disadvantage. And it's like, what about the thought of if we just bring everybody to the same level, then we're looking past the advantage that you have. And I think that's it. People fear losing their advantage. They don't want to admit they have it. They know they have it back to privilege, but we'll use advantage since you think that's overused. But people secretly know that if you even the playing field, they don't stand a chance, in my opinion, which is why they don't want the playing field even, which is why they want to keep their advantage, their privilege. But they don't want to say it outright. They just want to make sure you don't get to the same level as them. Okay. Well said. Thanks. No doubt. So we've talked for a while. We have. It's an hour and 40 minutes. That's a long time. It's a very long time. So we're going to stop. Okay. Let's stop. So, uh, very lively discussion. As most of our lively discussions, it didn't really get lively toward the end because I was eyeing the clock. I was like, oh man, we might finish that hour. 39 minutes later, I'm like, nah, not going to happen. Not this week. 
so uh be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons here on youtube if you enjoyed the uh conversation We're obviously on facebook instagram um apple spotify google tune in tune in <laughs> so uh be sure to check us out there uh we haven't posted any any of our clips on social media in a while so maybe i'll get some of those out this week um and stay tuned for not only guests but also us uh, announcing um some additional projects here the rush vibes uh we'll call it universe <laughs> everything everything's a universe now um we're branching or we're branching off from rush vibe studios so that'll be that'll be exciting uh in the coming weeks we'll have some announcements for you guys but other than that man uh it's good to be back it's nice to be back in the chair after taking a week i got a week off hasn't happened in a while um well, i don't think it's ever happened i've never not recorded with you so uh that was it was weird knowing that there's a recording happening for rush vibes and i wasn't involved other than putting it together but it was kind of cool so maybe we should have more guest hosts more often get bethany up in here i miss my girl yeah we get bethany up it's been she's local she's always on the move well summertime you know they be moving they do in the summertime so uh yes we will be back next week and uh hope you all have a good weekend hope you had a great labor day uh the unofficial end of summer so i'm slightly depressed but we'll get through it because next year no more daylight saving no more daylight saving i can't wait i'm so ready I cannot wait and with that we out catch y'all next week bye yeah Hey, hey, I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah.